Has everyone received the monthly financial report? Motion to uh, acknowledge receipt from Councilman Perkins and a second from Councilman Davis. All in favor say aye. At this time, Clerk Treasurer, would you please call the roll for purposes of addition to the agenda? An item. Billy Davis. Dan. Scott Moland. I have nothing. And I will turn the meeting over to Council President Heather Perkins for a committee of the whole. Crawfordsville Redevelopment Commission as lessee desires to enter into a lease with the Crawfordsville Redevelopment Authority as lessor to provide the project. And whereas there have been prepared drawings, plans, and estimates for the cost of the acquisition, construction, improvement, and financing of such project, and whereas the Commission has held or will hold a public hearing concerning whether to proceed with the project and enter into a lease to finance the project, and whereas it is in the best interest of the City and its citizens to proceed with the acquisition, construction, improvement, and financing of such project by the Authority, which will lease said project to the Commission under terms, whereby the Commission will own the lease project at the end of the lease financing period. And whereas drawings, plans, and specifications for the project have been or will be submitted to the agencies designated by law to approve plans and specifications for such facilities. And whereas, pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1.1-17-20.5, the authority and the commission may not issue bonds or enter into a lease payable in whole or in part for property taxes unless it receives the approval of the city fiscal body. And whereas it now appears to the Council that the leasing of said project will satisfy the need for the facilities and that the proposed lease therefore submitted to the Council with the authority as lessor and the commission as lessee, which is incorporated herein, provides for a fair and reasonable rental. Now therefore be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of Crawfordsville that the terms and conditions of the proposed form of lease are approved and agreed to as the basis for a determination to enter into a lease. The Commission is hereby authorized to levy a special benefits tax upon all of the property in the special taxing district. The is hereby authorized to issue its first mortgage bonds in an amount not to exceed $3,850,000 for the project. This resolution shall be in effect from and after its passage by the Common Council and approval by the Mayor of the City of Crawfordsville, Indiana. Do we have Sue Beasley here? Yes. Would you like to address the Council on this, Sue? Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Perkins. Um, the resolution you have before you, and I'm a little unclear as to what the two items were because everything was contained in the one resolution. It's actually just the one. The, the separate, second one actually is the Redevelopment Commission's resolution. So okay. there's really just one. <laughs> okay. Um, and what we're asking you to do this evening, let me back up. This afternoon, both the Redevelopment Commission and the Redevelopment Authority met. Both of them approved, approved the form of the lease. But because they are uh, not elected bodies, they're appointed bodies, they need the approval of this body before they can go forward with either the lease or issuing the bonds. Um, what I want to call to your attention, um, and I believe Councilor Perkins read it very clearly, but we are also asking not just approval of the lease and approval for the Redevelopment Authority to go forward with issuing the bonds, which you've set the maximum of 3850000 if you adopt this. But we are also asking for a property tax backup, um, and that is what Section 3 intends to do. Um, Pro Horwath is also here. They can address the, um, the TIF and the coverage of the debt, to your, hopefully to your satisfaction. But for marketability purposes, they are asking for the property tax backup because it would be easier to sell the bonds. You would get a lower interest rate if that is given. Um, for new members, that would mean in the event there was not sufficient lease payments from Ivy Tech or sufficient TIF revenues to make up the difference in the bond payments, then 
you are, would be authorizing the Redevelopment Commission to levy a special benefits tax on the Redevelopment District, which is the Redevelopment District is coterminous with the city of Crawfordsville. So that's what we are asking for this evening. Any questions for Susie? <coughs> Yes, sir. This special taxing district, is yes. it all the city of Crawfordsville then? Or yes, it is. It's okay. not just what, when we refer to TIF districts, <clears throat> um, that's actually an economic development area, and that's the little area in which the projects occur. Right. That's not the redevelopment district. The redevelopment district is the entire city of Crawfordsville. And do we have any idea what the likelihood of something that occurring might be? Um, it's never happened in my 30 years, but um, <laughs> that's not to say it could never happen. Right. I think it might be helpful. Um, I know Herschel Frierson is here from Crow. He could probably tell you they, they did an analysis some months ago as to what the coverage would be with the, the, just the TIF income, and I believe it's 150 percent. Is that yeah, that's right. correct? We, uh, we ran an analysis, uh, once again, Herschel Frierson with Crow Harwaf. Uh, we ran an analysis as far as what we're looking at from a coverage standpoint, uh, and it's approximately 150 percent with the revenues coming in. You guys know what that means? So you're 50 percent over what you really need? Is that what it's? Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. So we don't anticipate having any shortfall that would have to be made up, made up by a special tax on property owners in the city of Crawfordsville. Correct. But in the event that that happens, what kind of monies are we talking? And break that down into how much per tax rate household. We're looking at, from an annual debt standpoint, we're looking at approximately between 380000 to four hundred. Thousand now, in reference to taxpayers, uh, if a person has a a homestead property uh, assessed at seventy five thousand, potentially a, a twelve dollar impact uh, on a yearly basis. So, if we do a special benefits tax, uh, using as an example a homestead property uh, at seventy five thousand assessed, that's approximately twelve dollars. A year, assuming no circuit breaker. <clears throat> and assuming there's no payments from Ivy Tech and no TIF. Right. So that would be financing the entire project. Okay. And I think, you know, what's another key is assuming no circuit breaker on that particular homeowner. Right, because the circuit breaker is in place regardless. So exactly. more than the percentage, um, which has previously been established. Of their assessed valuation for property taxes. So if you had a $200,000 house, you're talking $25. Right. Okay. And that's assuming, assuming that no, all this. Assuming, assuming, assuming no circuit breaker. Everything else would fall down, then you. Yeah, would, if, if you hit the circuit breaker, you're not going to pay them. A homestead property will be uh, no more than 1% of the gross assessed value of their home. So when you say a home homestead property, you mean. One that can file for the homestead. A homestead and mortgage deduction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then there's your 2% is more of a lines of apartments, rental properties. So if they don't have a mortgage, it would be higher then? Right. Their circuit break would be at 2%. Okay. Have we ever been in a situation where Ivy Techs defaulted. defaulted on that? And I mean, what's. I guess what's the batting average? Are they batting a thousand? Has this never happened with Ivy Tech? I'm not familiar with it. Steve has probably had more negotiations with Ivy Tech than either of us. I mean, if they're like 50 50 on paying this, then you know, that's <laughs> obviously a concern. So, I mean, that, that's definitely a question as far as my concern needs to be asked. Yeah. Uh, I can't speak for Ivy Tech. Uh, they're not here tonight. Uh, I have be nice if they were, but in any case, I'm not, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any cases around the state of Indiana where that's occurred, okay? Um, I would also uh, comment that uh, I think it's worth it's worth noting that um, uh, the Crow Horwath financial analysis that Herschel's referring to, which goes back to May of last year, and it's one that, that the city council that we worked with at the time showed us a, uh, a surplus 
um, of, a, of about roughly $380,000 a year after paying uh, both the principal and interest on Commerce Park bonds and the new principal and interest on, on uh, the Ivy Tech project. So there'd be a three hundred and some thousand dollar surplus based on anticipated TIF income. So TIF income would have to drop by thirty percent to uh, to bring this in jeopardy. Uh, highly unlikely. As a matter of fact, we, we collected far more TIF income last year than we expected. And um, the the redevelopment commission currently has over three million dollars uh, in its accounts. So. We're, we're, we have a strong cash balance. We're not, we're not at all hand to mouth on this. Okay, um, so I think that's, uh, I, I think all that's worth, worth noting. Okay. I was going to point that out too, Steve. That the financial analysis that we were given at the time of the inception of this project indicated that this will never come into play. And that was based upon estimated revenues and expenses at that time. That's correct. Um, I, I don't want to be a naysayer and, and break up all the negatives, but I just wanted to make sure the council makes an informed decision, you know, with what we were asking and that you did understand what that was. Um, as I said, there's several layers before we would ever get to that, but I just wanted to be sure nobody had surprises. One more time, what's the length of the bond? And their, their lease is five years initially, is that what it is? And the bond is what, 10, 20? Yeah, the, um, I'll make a couple of comments about that. Uh, Ivy Tech is constrained by the state legislature, right? And not being able to enter into more than a five-year lease with a five-year option. Okay, the length of the bonds would have to be roughly about 15 years, uh, because at the moment, primary <laughs> source of income is coming from the the South TIF which is the Dry Branch Crawfordsville Square TIF, and that, that, and that TIF expires about 15 years out. So we, we'd have to keep the financing period with, within that time, okay? Uh, now, I would also uh, like to believe, optimistically believe, that during that time there will be additional business growth in the north, and there will be more than enough income to offset uh, uh, you know, the decline down there. But, but the fact is, is that prudently, we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't extend the financing uh, beyond the time period of the of the South TIF district, which is about 15 years. You guys may recall that a few years ago we connected the two TIF areas, so that it's actually one TIF. It's like a barbell TIF area. So we have the South TIF connected, and so it's one large TIF area. So it's all supporting the whole thing. So the, the fly in the ointment could be if um, Ivy Tech doesn't renew their lease after five years. Well, we would lose their, their lease payment, but we still have other income to offset that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not 100%, but we, we also <clears throat> still have money in the coffers. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would also comment that, that um, uh, the way things that are, are going with designing the, the Ivy Tech building, um, it appears that Ivy Tech's going to have to make a substantial contribution to the science labs in that building because of their cost. Okay, uh, I think that that the larger the Ivy Tech contribution becomes, the less likely they are to they are to leave. Okay, but whenever you're, we're finding that whenever you're, whenever you're, you're building a building with science labs and seven fume hoods and air handling equipment on the roof, uh, that gets very expensive. Okay, and that's their part of the. They're they're stepping up to that. Yes, they are. Yeah. Any other questions for Herschel or Steve or Sue? We're in a committee of the whole, so at this point, I would make a motion to send this on to the full council with a favorable resolution. Second. Any other discussion from the council members? Any questions from the audience? All those in favor of sending this on to the full council with a favorable recommendation, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This time I would move to adjourn the Committee of the Whole and reconvene as Council. Second. The Council is now adjourned again. Uh, at this time I will turn the meeting over to Fiscal Affairs Chairwoman Perkins for the business of the Fiscal Affairs Committee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have three, I strike that, four items on our agenda tonight. They each come to us with a favorable recommendation from the, the committee. The first is a resolution approving a historic preservation grant and loan for Fred Butts at 115 to 117 South Washington Street. This came to the council from the Historic Preservation Committee who, who also made a favorable recommendation after sending some of their members to uh, meet with the applicant and review some of the items that they had some questions about. They then sent it on to the council with a favorable recommendation. And it's my understanding that, is he here tonight? Yes. yes. Would you like to address the council? Mr. Butts? <coughs> I'm Roland Richard. I'm representing Mr. Butts back there being hearing problems. So, um, was there a question? Or? Well, just in general, it's my understanding that he's asking for the full um, grant and a loan if that's not enough to meet his needs, correct? Uh, yes. Sir. Okay. And there's sufficient funds in both accounts, Brandy, to yes. meet whatever there request is. he's making. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Butts? Is it, what is his vision for this property after it's restored? Um, uh, making it, uh, two rental spaces. Okay. He's got um, some pe persons that are interested in uh, renting the staff right now. Mm -hmm. No commitment has been made, but um, <clears throat> we've informed him that um, we will be doing some remodeling in front of the building. Uh, and there isn't any body in either one of the businesses below, correct? At this I'm sorry? Time. There isn't anyone anyone in the businesses below? No. No. Okay. Wasn't there some, didn't he want to maybe go ahead and, and uh, redo the upstairs for residents too, or is that later on? or That may be later on. Okay. Our, our main concern right now is the, the uh, frontal appearance of the building. Mm -hmm. So you're asking for a facade grant in the amount of $7,000 and a loan up to $10,000, both of which are the maximums for their respective accounts. Yes. Do you have quotes already? I'm pardon? Do you have any quotes already? Uh, we've had quotes on the windows. Is it, I mean, those are the biggest concern, I think, was the uh, <clears throat> appearance of the windows on the front. And, uh, and some of those will be restored and some will be replaced. Right. time I'd make a motion that we approve the resolution approving the historic preservation grant and loan from Mr. Butts. Second. We have a motion to approve the grant from Chairwoman Perkins and a second from Councilman Mullen. Is there any further discussion from the council? Anyone in the audience? Hearing none, Clerk Treasurer, you please call the roll for the one-time vote on the resolution. Dan Gard. Aye. Jennifer Lowe? Aye. Scott Mullen? Aye. Andy Biddle? Aye. Raymond Kirtley? Aye. Heather Perkins? Aye. Billy Davis? Aye. The next item is an Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The next item is an ordinance making an additional appropriation for the 2012 Ivy Tech project. This also comes to the council with a favorable recommendation from the committee, and it's it reads in part, whereas the Crawfordsville Redevelopment Commission has approved the construction of a building at the Crawfordsville Commerce Park for occupancy by Ivy Tech Community College. 
whereas the project's first phase is ready to, to proceed, but insufficient funds have been previously appropriated to cover the cost of the project's first phase, <coughs> whereas sufficient funds exist in the Crawfordsville Square Tax Increment Finance Allocation Fund, Fund 221, to pay expenses related to the project's first phase, and whereas the Crawfordsville Common Council supports this project and wishes to approve the appropriation of monies from Fund 221 for this purpose. And so what we're asking to do is to move $1,400,000 from the Crawfordsville Square TIP Allocation Fund unappropriated into an appropriated account so that it can be used for this Ivy Tech project. So at this time I would place this item on first reading. A second. We have a motion to place the ordinance on first reading from Chairwoman Perkins and a second from Councilman Biddle. Is there any discussion from the council? <coughs> any discussion from the audience? Councilman Davis has a question. Uh, yeah, sorry, Mr. Mayor. I was remembering last Monday that we talked about some figures, and I just wanted to know if you could run those figures again with what we were going to have left over or kind of remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> Anyone? Okay. Jerry probably has that. I, I do. For the additional appropriation for the $1.4 million, because they have a balance, a cash balance of $3.4 million, and then they also have their own budget, and we encumbered money from last year to start covering the cost. By time, if they spend all of this, their balance will be $1,120,000 right now if they spent everything and we didn't receive any tax revenue. That's what their cash balance on hand would be. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Treasurer, you please call the roll for the first reading of the ordinance approving the additional appropriation. Dan Gard? Aye. Jennifer Lowe? Aye. Scott Molin? Aye. Andy Biddle? Aye. Raymond Kirtley? Aye. Heather Perkins? Aye. Billy Davis? Aye. The next item is an ordinance making an additional appropriation for the year 2012 for the Foster Fletcher drain at the Commerce Park. This comes to us through committee with a favorable recommendation and it was brought before the council from the Crawfordsville Redevelopment Commission and um, it reads in part, whereas the Crawfordsville Redevelopment Commission has approved an agreement with the Montgomery County Drainage Board to subsidize the drainage board's improvements to the Foster Fletcher Drain, which lies partially in the Crawfordsville Commerce Park Economic Development Area. And whereas the Redevelopment Commission has approved contributing up to $163,000 to the Montgomery County Drainage Board's improvements to the Foster Fletcher Drain with EDA revenues, and for the EDA's benefit, but insufficient funds have been previously appoint, appropriated to cover the drain improvement expenditure. And so, as I understand this, the um, Farbersville Redevelopment Commission, in the interest of economic development on the north side of town, has agreed to contribute up to $163,000 to um, work on that drainage area up north um, so that some new developments can take place up there. We believe that there will be some uh, retail or commercial entities who will come in once this is done, and so we think it's best for the city to do that. Therefore, we're asking to move $165,000 from the TIF allocation fund unappropriated to the TIF allocation fund appropriated. And so I would play, move to place this on first reading. Second. We have a motion from Chairwoman Perkins and a second from Councilman Mullen to place this on first reading. Is there any uh, comments from the council? Are there any comments from the audience? Hearing none, Clerk Treasurer, you please call the roll on the first reading of the additional appropriation for Foster Fletcher Drain. Dan Gard? Aye. Jennifer Lowe? Yes. Scott Mullen? Aye. Andy Biddle? Aye. Raymond Kirtley? Aye. Heather Perkins? Aye. Billy Davis? Aye. The last item that we have is the resolution of the, Com of the Common Council approving a determination to enter into a proposed lease and the issuance of first mortgage bond. This is the matter that we just addressed in the Committee of the Whole, and it is giving permission for the 
Redevelopment Authority and the Redevelopment Commission to enter into a lease and to issue first mortgage bond for the Ivy Tech project. And at this time, I would move to approve this resolution. I will second that. We have a motion from Chairwoman Perkins and a second from Councilman Davis to place this resolution on first reading. Are there any comments from the council? Are there any comments from the audience? Hearing none, Clerk Treasurer, will you please call the roll on the one-time vote on the resolution. Dan Gard. Aye. Jennifer Lowe. Yes. Scott Mullen. Aye. Andy Biddle. Aye. Raymond Kirtley. Aye. Heather Perkins. Aye. Billy Davis. Aye. That concludes fiscal affairs. Thank you. At this time, we'll turn the meeting over to Chairman Raymond Kirtley for ordinances and petitions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there is one matter coming before the council this evening uh, that has come by, <coughs> through a favorable recommendation from the Ordinances and Petitions Committee. Uh, this is a resolution for consideration regarding the establishment of the power plant economic development area. And in uh, pertinent part, the resolution declares that the Crawfordsville Redevelopment Commission did on October 12, 2011, adopt a declaratory resolution <clears throat> establishing the power plan economic development area as an economic development area under Indiana Code 36714 and confirmed the declaratory resolution on November 23, 2011, after conducting a public hearing. The commission on February the 29th of 2012 amended the confirmatory resolution to correct a scrivener's error in the legal description of the economic development area. And whereas Indiana statute 36.7.14.41 requires that the determination that a geographic area is an economic development area be approved by the Common Council, uh, that is why this has come before the Council for consideration. If this would be adopted, um, <clears throat> we would be uh, stating that the establishment of an economic development area in an area known as the power plant economic development area as described in the declaratory res resolution and in exhibit A is hereby approved. And as I understand it, this the sum and substance was the fact that there had been uh, some, uh, again, some changes that had to be made in the legal description. Is that accurate? Correct. You just need the power plant TIF district to actually be at the power plant. So we had to correct the, a few descriptions. <laughs> that might be kind of important to have that. <laughs> at this time, uh, I would like to go ahead and, and um, bring this for the council uh, and move it on uh, and ask that it be um, approved, adopted this evening. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second that. We have a motion from Chairman Kirtley, a second from Councilman, Councilwoman Lowe to approve the resolution. Is there any discussion from members of the council? Any discussion from the audience? Hearing none, Clerk Treasurer, will you please call the roll, the one time vote on the resolution amending the TIF? Dan Gard? Aye. Jennifer Lowe? Aye. Scott Mullen? Aye. Andy Biddle? Aye. Raymond Kirtley? Aye. Heather Perkins? Aye. Billy Davis? Aye. That is the extent of the business uh, from the ordinance and petitions. My name is Mayor. Thank you. At this time, we'll turn the meeting over to Traffic Parking and Safety Chairman Biddle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, Traffic Parking and Safety Committee met a week ago today and approved uh, with a favorable recommendation, a uh, uh, request from Pomps Tire to vacate the alley directly behind their business. And that would be uh, from the, actually I found out reading the description, the uh, what I thought was an alley between the post office and Pomps Tire is actually a street. It's called Lynn Street. I didn't know that. And uh, so it would be from Lynn Street, the, or the alley there between uh, 
um, the post office and Pomp's Tire, and then it would be north directly, north right behind Pomp's Tire over to Market Street. So the alley between AT&T and the post office would still be open, and the alley north of the post office would still be open. It's just that little short stretch right behind uh, Pomp's Tire, and it comes out on Market Street. Um, sir, would you like to speak on that just a minute? I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. Please say your name. My name is Bob Bonac with Bonac Engineering. I'm the civil engineer representing Pomp's Tires. Um, last year, Pomp's Tires had uh, purchased the, the property, and uh, they were planning to move forward with uh, making some improvements. They've already made some facade improvements on the building. And the other improvement they're looking to do was to improve uh, access for large vehicles, semis, uh, over-the-road trailers, uh, to get to the back portion of the, of the facility where they actually do the tire changing and the, and the maintenance and, and, uh, and the operation on them. And what they're proposing to do initially was uh, go ahead and widen the existing alley from the existing uh, 20 feet, or 16 feet, I'm sorry, to uh, 28 feet by t holding the east property line, or the east alley line, and extending the asphalt 28 feet, and then taking out the existing retaining wall and making a larger radius return so vehicles can actually come in off of Market Street, travel southbound on the alley, uh, have a better time accessing uh, the back of the facility, and then traveling southbound past the post office in order to get back out um, on, the, on the road. In order to do that, they're, they're going to take out the entire retaining wall and go ahead and repair that and also go ahead and redo the streetscape along Market Street to match the, uh, the uh, city plans for that. Um, and as, as part of that, um, Scott had requested or inquired to see if we would be interested in taking over uh, that portion of the alley if the city were to vacate it. And that put the plans in motion to go ahead and make this formal request. Um, essentially, that, that alley itself, it will be vacated. But since the purpose of it is for vehicular traffic, it will be encumbered with an ingress-egress easement, which was submitted um, also along with, with, the, uh, with the request. And then in order to accommodate the utilities, uh, there will be a public utility easement to accommodate the uh, fiber optic lines, uh, which, which travel through the alley, and the, uh, the electric lines that run through there. We do have uh, Agree, we have tentative agreements set up with both the uh, Windstream Wireless and with uh, Crawford Dole Electric and Power to go ahead and relocate the lines and actually bury the fiber optic and um, <clears throat> from the building all the way over and also move the poles to the east side in order to facilitate the traffic and to, and to go ahead and improve the widening um, so there won't be a conflict with, uh, with the incoming traffic. I have any questions? I guess you need a motion. Though. I would move that we would uh, forward this on with a favorable, favorable recommendation to uh, um, for them to vacate the alley, or for us to vacate the alley. Yeah. I have yeah, a couple quick questions only because I was. We need a second. Okay, we have a motion by Chairman Biddle and a second by Councilwoman Perkins to place this uh, ordinance on first reading. Any questions from the council? I did. <laughs> I was unable to attend the Monday meeting, so I'm probably going to ask a few questions that have already been asked. But um, in the event that by vacating the alley, does that restrict the city from using that, or is that cut off traffic? Or is that nothing? By, vac by, by vacating the alley, the ownership will, will change hands from the from the city to the private entity. However, based on the fact that uh, it will be encumbered with an ingress-egress easement, it will allow for traffic for whomever is, needs to use that alley or wants to use it um, to go ahead and travel across that way. Uh, the, the restrictions placed on the ingress-egress easement, is, it is perpetual, and it will not be, it will, you will not be able to build on that. It, it, the ingress-egress easement is an instrument that is recorded um, with the county and restricts land use to being an ingress-egress. And then what would happen if 15 years from now the city would like to, you guys move out of town and the city would like to have that back for the weekend to? I would assume that they would probably have to purchase that portion of the alley <laughs> from the private entity. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess the only no, question it, is can we accomplish the same thing without vacating the alley? The, the, the initial submittal that, that um, 
the pump tire or the, the initial intent was to go ahead and provide the widening regardless if the alley was vacated or not. Um, when Scott had indicated if we were, if Pomps Tire would be willing to take over the alley, um, one, it, it takes a little bit of maintenance off of your books. Uh, the ingress egress easement encumbers the, that alley, um, so, or what, what will be still used as a driveway, essentially. Um, so it will have the future use the same as it is right now. Uh, so essentially it's, it's more of a, more of a, I guess, an accounting type of a situation where um, it, the alley comes off of your books, it goes under their books, they're responsible for maintaining it, the ingress egress encumbers it so they can't build on it, and it is passable or usable by any entities that need to use it. So, But once again, can we accomplish the same thing without doing vacation? In, in, in theory, it, yes, they, they would, they, would uh, they are planning to widen the driveway assuming we do have permission from, from the council, either approval of plan set uh, that was submitted or an approval of vacation where it just becomes a driveway. So either way, they are... They the way I understand, if we if we vacate it, then they have to maintain it. We don't have to maintain right. it. I, I, yeah. If we don't vacate it, though, I don't know if they would actually be allowed to improve it. That, that's legal. That, that was my question. Can the same result be... Can we accomplish the same thing without vacating the alley? They can widen, they can right. they set back farther from the alley, right. move it, their it, parking it. lot, but they can't really improve it because that, it's the city's responsibility to do it. When I spoke to NDOT, they said that the only thing holding up their permit is they have to show proof of ownership. So I think that ownership from them would be a requirement of the state to allow them to use that as their access. Right. I see it as a win-win. It's going to improve that image there. <clears throat> Aesthetics are going to be so much better, and the city doesn't have to maintain that area, and it helps them accomplish what they want to accomplish. And the easement runs with the land, so it's not like if Palm sells it to Joe's Tire Shop 10 years down the road that they can say, well, well the easement goes away. The easement's there forever as long as that alley is there. So I, I think it's a win-win. I agree. Any further discussion from the council? Any discussion from the audience? Hearing none, Clerk Treasurer, you please call the roll for the first reading of the ordinance vacating the alley east of Water Street and south of Market. Dan Gard. Nay. Jennifer Lowe. Aye. Scott Mullen. Aye. Andy Biddle. Aye. Raymond Kirtland. Aye. Heather Perkins. Aye. Billy Davis. Nay. Okay. Chairman Biddle, does that conclude your business? Yes, sir. Okay. That's all I have. Uh, under miscellaneous, I believe uh, Councilwoman Perkins had one item. Uh, we need to appoint a new member to the Stormwater Board, a council appointee. It doesn't need to be a council member, but it needs to be a city resident. <clears throat> Um, to replace Joe Mitten, who passed away in February. He was a council appointment. And so we need to be thinking about that so that we can get that uh, position filled. I know that he was a Republican, but I don't know if the political makeup of that board requires that we, I don't know if there's a political requirement. So we'll look into that. And Brenda, if you can circulate an email about what any other requirements besides city residency. And uh, if we could be thinking about someone so that maybe at the April meeting we could have someone present and get someone appointed to fill his vacancy. That's all I have. Thank you. Nope. That was a stormwater board. Stormwater board. Do you know when the, when did they meet, Lynn? Third Thursday of the month. Third Thursday of the month. Thank you. Is there anything else to come before the council? Uh, what time is the stormwater board meeting? Six. Six, Six yeah. So that would be a requirement that they be available at 6 p.m. <laughs> on the Thursday of the month. <laughs> Any other business? Move to adjourn. Second. We are adjourned.